Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I just thought I'd just mention, it's gonna be a bit different this morning because we're a bit crowded. So, uh, communion, when Donna goes in to wash her hands upstairs, please come down, you'll be first. We'll come through communion and then out through the vestry around the back and then back in, please. And the rest of us will come from the back to the front for communion, of course, we'll come up for you. Okay, or Donna will come up for you, not me. Anyway, thank you. Good morning and welcome to St. Michael and All Angels Anglican Church. <laughs> My name is Donna Wall and I serve as priest of this parish. And we welcome all who are here in person and those who will share in the service uh, later today. St. Michael's is located on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people in the Sartlip Nation. And we give thanks for them and for their journey with us as we walk together toward healing and reconciliation. In our Anglican faith, we understand the work of healing and reconciliation to be modeled by Christ. And we seek to shape our lives and worship by his example, looking for those broken places in our relationships with self, neighbor, and God that are in need of healing and wholeness and working toward that reality. As we seek to know Jesus and to shape our lives by the word of God, we understand God as something infinite and larger than all we can imagine, a love that comes close to us in all seasons of life. We encounter Jesus as the one who invites us to lay our burdens down, to find rest for our weariness, and to begin again living into the encouragement and hope God offers. In this long season of pandemic, where the days and months have blurred together, the liturgical year helps anchor us in another reality. This pilgrimage, like all faith journeys, requires courage, perseverance, grace, and patience as we stumble with weariness and frustration and look for resting places of humor, kindness, and beauty where we can catch our breath find nourishment, and recalibrate. Between Epiphany and Lent, we walk with Jesus in the early days of his public ministry as he meets and calls others to join him in sharing and living into the healing love of God. It is a joy to welcome you all into our space and to our service, and especially to Deb Koning, who is uh, filling in as our musician for the service today. So welcome, Deb, and thank you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving God, you have called forth disciples and prophets to live and speak your word. Give us ears to hear, lives to respond, and voices to proclaim the good news of salvation, which we know in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us listen for the word of God. The first reading is Isaiah chapter six, verses one to eight. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robes filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, 
Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots of the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you, had, if, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Kephas, then to the twelve, 
Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. I pray that I may speak to you this day in the name of God, holy and blessed Trinity. Amen. The season of Epiphany begins with the spiritual journey of the Magi, their openness to something new, their generosity in sharing that which they've brought, gifts and symbols, signs and wonders that they offer to Jesus and his family. Epiphany continues with stories of Jesus offering the gifts he brings. At a wedding in Cana, 
in his hometown synagogue, and today at the seashore. Gift giving can be tenuous, exciting, hopeful, and sometimes disappointing. Gifts can be well-planned, spontaneous, and the reception more or less than we anticipated. The gift of water to wine was well-received, even if unknown by many of the people. The gift of scripture shared and fulfilled in the hearing of the listeners in Jesus' hometown was initially well-received, but then less so when they considered the ramifications and then suddenly chased him to the edge of a cliff. This week, having slipped away from the angry mob, he meets another crowd. This crowd also moving in close into his personal space, but with a much different intention. They don't want to kill him. They want to receive the gift of life from him. The good news that he proclaimed from the prophet Isaiah, their presence indicates a reminder of both the call to receive and to share the good news, to open ourselves to the possibility of new life. In our first reading, Isaiah's call to serve God is magnificent and terrifying. In the year that King Uzziah died, King Uzziah was a good king, and he had shaped his reign by care for the people. So in the wake of his death, there is great uncertainty about what will come next and what their lives will be like. There are for us, like for Isaiah, defining moments in time. In the year that Desmond Tutu died, in the year we moved, in the year there was a flood. Each defining moment opening us to God's presence in new ways, particularly when things are off balance. Like Jeremiah's call last week, there is in Isaiah's call a wrestling with being unclean. And we hear that in the gospel as well. When Simon sees and perceives who Jesus is, he feels unworthy to serve with him. So there is, in each of these stories, that call to cleansing and to healing and being touched by God, who trusts us and wants to work with us anyway. And the author's placing it at this particular moment in time because those specific instances connect us to the other moments in our lives, years when everything changes, the shifting realities opening us to God's presence in fresh ways, and calling us again to lead with the gospel, the good news that is God's healing love. In the past few years, when people have worked together for the common good to fight the pandemic, in the year a convoy rolled into the capital city with chaos. We hold these things wearily and burdened, wondering how we can lead with gospel, how we can lead with good news. At every turn, Jesus reminds us that that's our call, to lead with that gospel the little bit of good news that is ours to share, and to allow for the possibility that good news can grow even when it seems impossible. Think of offering a gift of an apple or a carrot to a horse, as Helen has taught me. And you hold your hand flat, right, so that they can get a sense of what's there and whether they want it or not. And then nuzzling in to accept, generally, or reject. The offering of ourselves can also be a bit risky, bumpy and unsettling. Rejection, condemnation, or the flatness of a meh, I'm not sure. In Madeline Lingle's book, Wind in the Door, 
an angel appears in Meg's garden. Proganoskis isn't like a Hallmark angel or a chubby baby with wings. He's pretty terrifying, like the angels in today's reading from Isaiah. The six wings moving back and forth and the many eyes. The presence of God, the messengers of God, also catch us off balance. And in that moment of terror and wonder, open us to something, to that glory of God coming close and touching us, all of us, each part of who we are, the parts where we feel we have something to offer and the parts where we know that we don't. And God holding it all with a tenderness beyond our imagining. For those of us who are still wrestling with how to use plural pronouns for people, today's reading gives us an example of that as the holiness of God is plural. And they say, who will go for us? Who shall we send? And Isaiah courageously says, send me. So as that trinity of God, holy and blessed, calls to us, asking, who will go? Who can we send? And we bravely step forward and say, you can send me. <laughs> because our call to walk in step with God from the nativity to the dedication to the Jordan to the wilderness to the cities and towns among those who receive him and those don't, who don't is terrifying and beautiful wonderful and wearying. And we step forward with a little bit of gospel news, hoping that as we meet one another and the gospel news we each have to share, it will continue to multiply. So today we gather at the edge of the sea with the crowds pressing in to hear what Jesus might say in the midst of so much chaos and unrest, and look with Jesus into the depths, the depths of God's love, the depths of God's power to heal, the depths of God's power to make new. And Jesus encourages Simon to let the nets down again and do you hear in that sentence, Simon is really unsure. They've been fishing all night. And so he says, like, we've been fishing all night and we didn't catch anything. And you can pause and imagine Simon's hoping Jesus says something like, oh, I didn't realize you'd been fishing all night. Don't worry, let's just call it a day. But Jesus steps into that pause and says, Try again, lower them again. And they pull up so many fish into the boat that the boat begins to sink. And so they call for their friends in the other boat and that boat gets filled up with so many fish that it begins to sink. And this is good news. And we're trying to get our heads around that. How is the sinking boat good news? And who's gonna clean all of those fish? And what are we gonna do with them all? Right? This good news means there's amazing amount of work that has to be done. Which is generally how it is with good news. Because the work is also part of the gospel. God's call to Jeremiah to Isaiah, to the psalmist, to Jesus, to Paul, to us, is one that continually requires us to go deep into the unknown and sometimes unsettling places. It is a call to hold the wonder of miracle and burden 
and imagining what living into that will entail. This is the challenge of epiphany, to imagine, to enter the depths, to keep looking for the light, being the light, and sharing the light. Amen. I invite you to stand and share with me with the creed. We believe in God, the creator of all things, the God of Abraham and Sarah, the Holy One who freed the slaves from Egypt with steadfast love and mercy, who made a straight path in the wilderness, who promises to make all things new. We believe in Jesus, the Messiah, who is Emmanuel, God with us. He is King of Kings, yet born of Mary. He showed God's love through healing and teaching and chose the way of servant suffering by dying on a cross. After three days, he rose from the dead and appeared to many. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the one who inspires faith, who has spoken through prophets and preachers, the one who breathes new life into the church and the world, who is making all things new. We believe that God is still creating. We believe that Jesus is still with us. We believe that the Holy Spirit is calling us forth in love and mercy. This is our hope. This is our faith. Amen. Having been called by Christ and trusting the Spirit's guidance in our journey, we offer our prayers for the world God loves, the church God calls, and all people in need. To the petition, God of light, please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Gracious God, who has called each of us by name, we know that your invitation is generously extended to all. Help us be generous in our response and courageous in our reaching out. God of light, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God who calls, your invitation extends into all of life. May we know your presence waking and sleeping and as we move through our days. Help us to recognize your presence in our neighbors, in our places of work and refuge, in all of creation and in ourselves. God of light, hear our prayer. God who calls, your invitation brings us into unfamiliar territory and gives us a fresh vision. Enable us to embrace the newness you offer and to work in helping to bring your vision to earth. We pray for our diocese and ask that you give wisdom to those who work on our behalf to strengthen and embolden this church you have entrusted to us. We pray for our primate, Linda, our national indigenous archbishop, Mark, our metropolitan, Lynn, our bishop, Anna, and our priest, Donna. In our diocese, we play, pray for St. Peter's Comox and their priest, Sulan, 
and Saint Saviour, Denman Island, and their priest, James. And we pray for Diocese of Kootenay and Archbishop Lynn. In the Anglican prayer cycle, we pray for the Church of Ireland and their archbishops, John and Michael. God of light, hear our prayer. God, your invitation for us to follow Christ sometimes send us, sends us into places of uncomfortable challenges and unknown possibilities. Increase our faith that we may follow and our imaginations that we may dream of peace between nations, peoples, and faith traditions. God of light, hear our prayer. God, you lead your people with humor, compassion, and creativity, and call us to love and to live into these qualities in our relationships with you and each other and our world. We pray for all who govern our nation, province, and communities, that they may be guided by wisdom and understanding, justice and compassion. We pray for the Queen, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the Premier, and for all in our local governments. God of light, hear our prayer. God who calls, your invitation moves us to reach out to those in need, the sick, the shut-in, the poor, the voiceless, the victims of injustice. Strengthen us to be your healing presence in the lives of those whom we hold in our hearts and those known to you alone. God of light, hear our prayer. God, in the fullness of time, we are reunited with you in heaven. We ask your blessing on all who have died, all who are dying, and all who mourn. May your spirit surround them, all with restored life, hope, and healing. God of light, hear our prayer. Holy God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring healing to all wounds, make whole all that is broken, speak truth to all illusion, and shed light in every darkness. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Beloved, the peace of Christ be always with you. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Humankind, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them, and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaim the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God.
standing as you are able, let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the Creator's blessing be yours, encircling you round, above you, within you. May the angel's blessing be yours and the joy of the saints to inspire you, to cherish you. May the sun's blessing be yours, the wine and the water, the bread and the stories, to feed you, to remind you. May the Spirit's blessing be yours, the wind and the fire, the still small voice, to comfort you, to disturb you. And the blessing of the God who has created you, the Christ who has befriended you, and the Spirit who has gifted you, be with you this day and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Yes.